yes, you need to have coaching and training and things like that. All that's important, but you also need to live life because we, we don't live to work. We work to live. What's going on to the point listeners. It's your boy, Chris, the host of to the point home services podcast. And this particular episode is going to be something special. Why you ask if you weren't asking, I'm going to tell you anyhow, the reason being is this is what we're going to call a feature episode. We've not done something quite like this before. Now, typically you'll hear me come on when it's a uh, it's the time of year where I'm going and speaking at all these events and I have a bunch of them that are, that are coming up just to share with anybody who's listening, who wants to come and say hello. And most of you always do. And I love that part of it. So, um, and I would encourage you to con- still continue to do that. So I thought there's one event that is coming up in particular that I've become really passionate about for, for a few different reasons. And the name of this event is called the freedom event from home service. Freedom is the, uh, the, the organization that is, it's a new one, which is what we're going to talk about, but their freedom event that's coming up. And, uh, and because I've, I've, uh, had a few conversations, not only with our, not only with our guest, but also, um, with one of my good friends who started the whole thing, I just really believe in the purpose of it. And I believe the industry needs it. I think this is a long overdue opportunity to help the trades uh, with multiple things. I don't want to like, I don't want to talk about all things because that's part of what this podcast is, but this podcast is going to be about what is home service freedom and this freedom event that's coming up, the purpose of it, the why behind it, and why is it so special that I'm doing a podcast solely about it? So, to share that information, I've got my longtime friend. I mean, this is going back to like what early 2000, late middle 2000, somewhere around there, like six, seven bills, something like that. 2000, I'd say 2006, seven. April of 2006 is what when we opened the Phoenix office. Oh, baby. So it would have been around 2006, 2007 then, but Bill Russell is my guest on on uh, the podcast today. Again, he and I go way back, way back. And so we were kind of joking about this um, pre-podcast earlier, but he doesn't technically have a title, but we, we, have a, we give him a title of, or he's given himself a title of chief doer because he's doing all the things for home service freedom. <laughs> You do it all, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been crazy. Uh, sales, marketing, event planning, uh, working on the coaching side. You know, I feel extremely extremely grateful uh, that you know Tommy came a calling and and what you know the opportunity that's presented me. You know, you get to a point in your life when you you know you've done a lot of different things for yourself in your career, but now I really kind of feel like I'm in this second evolution of it's not about me, it's about helping others. Um, a lot of what, you know, we're trying to build and what we're going to build and what we're going to be successful with a lot of great, a uh, lot of great people involved and partners like yourself. Yeah. And, and I think what's cool about this, and he mentioned Tommy. So for those who might not know, he's talking about it's Tommy Mello and Tommy Mello has, is based out of Phoenix, Arizona, owns a company called A1 Garage Door, put on a garage door, has garage door freedom and put on a vertical track event for the garage door industry. But anybody knows him, he's got his massive home service millionaire. He's got the home service millionaire book he's had out. He's actually had um, Elevate, another book that had come out. Um, he's got a massive podcast. So I think, I don't even, what the, what the hell's the name of his podcast? Home, there's too many home service. Home, he has the home service millionaire. He wrote the book, Home Service Expert. There we go. Thank you. What a, Anyway, he's everywhere. Or the other way around. Yes, way it's the other way around. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so, but he's all over the place. And this dude's got a heart of gold. And he's got, a, and he's incredibly talented. And I just love his passion for, helping people and bringing things, you know, when he, he recognizes a new potential, you know, potential, and he's not afraid to be innovative, you know, and bring it to market. And that's kind of what this whole thing is. is it's something that it was this vision and dream that he had to help the industry be better, but not just better in the way of like financial, better in the way of just your livelihood. And how can you combine these things, you know, uh, into one. And, and he's just he, like, he's a, like, he's a lover of all people. Like, I don't know anybody that Tommy dislikes. If there is, he's never told me. And I got a pretty good friendship with him. So he's just no, a, he's no just doubt. a good dude. So I want to talk about this event because it 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 is different. It's different in in how uh, and what the purpose of it is. It's not a financially driven like organization event. It's not about the money. It's about you, the contractor, and uh, and about 
people in general and, and bringing those people together and kind of changing a bit of the narrative on like, yes, you need to have coaching and training and things like that. All that's important, but you also need to live life because we, we don't live to work. We work to live. And, uh, and look, I'm 44. I mean, Bill, we bet in 2006, it's 2023 and time is flying by. And like every day I, like I, you know, like I swear I fly out of town so much to different events. I come back in and my, my, I feel like my kids got older in that like <laughs> week I was gone. So I really need to, you know, to have balance, you know, in my life. And uh, you hear about people talk about work-life balance all the time. There has to be some, like you are going to miss things. Like it, it is unreasonable if you're really scaling, scaling a business to think like you can't miss anything. And I thought that it, it's just, it's, it's impossible. Like something has to give, but you got to minimize what you're actually missing. So there's a lot of ways you can go about that. And there's just things that you might not even know, but this, you know, this particular um, event I'm really excited about because I understand what's going to be shared, you know, with everyone who is lucky enough to be able to attend because I know it maxes out. So so, Bill, welcome to the podcast. Finally, you're on. You're on. You made it. <laughs> yeah, I like. I feel like. I feel like that. Like you know, when the Rock says, "Finally, <laughs> I've come back <laughs> to the podcast." Um, you know, I, I've been a big study of, of of to the point for a long time, and you know, Chris, you know, and and some of my other things that I've done in my career. Um, I have done some podcasting and some interviewing. And one of the things that I always like to do when I'm doing a podcast is I want to flip the script on the host or on the guest. Okay. Okay. And so as a study of to the point, I have some rapid fire questions of the history of to the point. Oh, baby. And doing my research and preparation for, for today's podcast that I want to throw at you. Let her rip tater chip. (laughs) <laughs> All right, here you go. The f- very first podcast of To The Point had two people on it. Who were those two people? It's all Paul and Ken Goodrich. Okay, very good. Okay. <laughs> um, which, which guest in the history of To The Point is the most expletives ever used during the podcast? Ishmael Valdez. Okay. That's an easy one, but that's old school Ishmael. He's actually cleaned it up a little bit. Okay. Not a lot, but a little bit. Who's the only person to ghost the podcast? Oh man. I remember this. Hold on. Ishmael Valdez. No, Oh, that is an incorrect statement. According to my research. Okay. Then hang on. Don't, uh, don't give me the answer. Don't give me the answer. Who ghosted me on the podcast? Oh my goodness. Well, here's the reason I said that because Ish did ghost me like three times before we actually got <laughs> recorded. Just nobody knew it. Okay. You got to tell me, Bill. I don't know. I don't want, I, I'm, I don't want to keep any, everybody else in suspense. My understanding is Bill Pulte is the only guest to ever have ghosted. Oh, you that's, eventually had, that's, and you eventually had him back. That's on the podcast. right. The- I have a, cra- I have a Cracker Jack staff of people that have dug deep into the history and the, and in, in the banks of the podcast. Wow. I forgot all about that. Okay. Here's my next one. When's the only time that the Wi-Fi has gone out on the podcast? Oh, um, I think this was, was this the trench, the Mexican trench or podcast is not, it wasn't with Mario Camperano. Uh, what nope. if I went out in the podcast? Was it with Gary V when Gary V was on? It was with Gary V. Man, that was Gary a, v. that was a suck, that was sucky timing. All right, two it was, pro- last it was probably two his last, fault. Two last, <laughs> <laughs> probably was <laughs> two, two last podcast questions. Okay. Um, only person to ever answer the door to get a FedEx during the podcast. Oh man, I know this one too. Um, I remember it because if dogs were going crazy on the podcast, oh crap! I can picture it too. I can't remember who the heck the guest is. The real Frank. The real Frank Besednik. That was the that was the episode. Oh, that's the one we just aired not too long ago. We we re aired that had a uh, tall. Oh no no, it was a uh, he. That's when I had Bob Saget on to do the birthday message to Tall Paul because Tall Paul looked like 
Bob Saget. But that was that episode. I forgot about that. Hey, at least he didn't pull what Stephen Gurley did as my co-host and leave twice because Ken was texting him on the podcast to respond to him. <laughs> well, and then I have two two rapid fire questions. Okay. Okay. Um, for for you. Okay. Single single malt or bourbon? Ooh, bourbon. Easy. Bourbon. Okay. Yeah. And then last but not least, if you weren't doing the things that you were, you know, your career's obviously spanned a, a tremendous amount. If you weren't doing what you're doing now and helping contractors grow, helping other people and what you're doing as far as with regards to Rhino and, you know, the other ventures that you're involved in, what would be the one thing that you would do that nobody knows that you want to do? Oh, man. That's a really great question um, because my life is like so wrapped up in all things Rhino and any of the investments and things I, I have, I've been involved in and I legit enjoy those things, which is what annoys Anna because she wants to have normal conversations with me that are unwork related. You know what, what the, I think my, the one thing I've always wanted to do, well, let me, I had to change it, but um, I think you knew this about me, but you know, I raced cars and I really wanted to race in Indianapolis 500 and I got really, really, really close. Uh, to making that happen, but couldn't quite get it done. So technically it's a failure. Um, most of the league got it successful. I still got to race around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but I never raced in Indianapolis 500. So I couldn't accomplish that goal. But Anna will tell, I try to minimize uh, race talk around Anna, by the way, my wife, um, she went through it with me, but I would love to have ownership in an IndyCar team. I really want to have ownership in an IndyCar team, not because I believe it's going to make me a, a lot of money because it's probably still going to cost me money, but I enjoy it. You know, and so I would love to just have ownership, you know, in the team. And, and I will, Bill, hear me out. I will have it. So first I got to get some sort of sponsorship on a car for a 500. I can accomplish that when I'll be good. I'm not sure what it's going to be, which company it's going to be, but it'll be one of them. And, but I really want to have ownership in a team, you know, at some point. But I'm running as hard as I can till I'm 50. Like, that's the goal. I'm 44. I'm going to run as hard as I can till I'm 50. And then after that, we'll see what the assets do. And we'll just keep playing around with that type of stuff. Great question. Well, now I'm going to hand I'm going to hand the podcast back over to you. Thank but, you. Uh, I, I I thought we'd we'd flip the script a little bit. That was today. fun. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was fun, man. I uh, won't tell you I won't tell you who my Cracker Jack staff is, but we'll we'll keep that uh, <laughs> we'll keep that on the down low. <laughs> uh, well, listen, um, you know, to, thanks for handing my show back to me. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> um, I want to just real quick, you know. To, to, to anybody who, you know, who doesn't know, and I don't want to assume that they do know, but super proud of your, of your health journey that you've been on over the course of the last year, man. I mean, you look super healthy. I know that you're feeling, you know, you're feeling healthy. Um, and, and to all of our listeners, man, so, so important to live a, as healthy of a life as you, as you can and, and just be, you know, spend a little bit of time on, on yourself because, uh, you know, if you don't have good health, like what good is everything else? Like what good is all this stuff too? So, but you also yeah, perform yeah. better, man. Like you're also just better for everybody yourself, for, for, your, for work, for your friends, for your family, like when you feel better. And I know that I started working out over the course of the last like two months because of our little text message circle group I, I'm in. And, uh, and I, even though I don't enjoy going to the gym yet, I feel better after I've done it. So, so I commend you, man, on your, on your health journey. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think the long and short of it is that uh, this isn't where you're going to pull the Roy Firestone uh, interview on me and get me like uh, <laughs> the guy did in Jerry Maguire crying on the episode. <laughs> but um, the, a lot of good things have happened to me positively. I made a lot of, you know, a, a, and a lot of the listeners that uh, are in the in the trades probably have faced uh, a lot of the same same battles and demons that, that, that I've faced as far as, uh, making some journeys into, you know, putting themselves into a better position by sobriety. Yep. Um, you know, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't a 12 step program or it was anything. It was, Hey, let me, l let me, let me focus on the things that are most important. It starts with me, um, and putting me into a, a better position in life to say, you know, I'm, I'm better as a person without alcohol than I am with alcohol. And, uh, you know, it, it takes you down a path of, of, of being ready for things that you not might not normally be ready for. And so, you know, I quit about uh, 14 months ago and, and, you know, I've gone through a tremendous amount of, uh, of oppor opportunities. Um, you know, I'm looking at it as a challenge I look at it as opportunities to, to deal with different things. And, you know, unfortunately eight weeks ago I was diagnosed with, uh, 
with colon cancer, which, uh, you know, on July 24th, I, I ended my days to, of being a vi victim of cancer, but being a survivor of That's cancer. Right. I think that anything that anytime that you, you have gratitude in your life, uh, for what you're doing or where you're going. And then in addition to that, you're, you're on the right mindset of clarity of what you have. I think that it provides you a really kind of an unstoppable mindset to put yourself in the right position for long-term success. And, um, you know, whatever reasons that those reasons came to me or those challenges came to me, it's a situation where I, I've tried to embrace them and be positive about them. Um, you know, I know that there are a, a lot of times where, you know, people battle it and, uh, we, we all live in a very hectic lifestyle and we are all trying to do something, you know, to, to be better. And, you know, I just heard Gary V just say just today, you know, it's not about being a billionaire tomorrow. It's about waking up and being rich in life and happy with where you're going. And, you know, I, I, I am fortunate that I am surrounded about around people that are multimillionaires in my circle and my network. Um, you know, and the, the opportunity you work with guys that, that are outside the box thinkers that, you know, quite, quite, a, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, like Tommy, you know, the guy does not need more money. He likes more money, but he doesn't need more money. Right. It obviously did very well with the exit on, 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 on a one. And, but now it's about how do I influence other people around yeah. him? I mean, the guy made 25 millionaires out of the, the exit of a one and you know what he's doing. And now it's like, how do I give back to a community? Yeah. And I really have embraced that uh, uh, perspective of being able to say, Hey, I'm a part of something to be able to give back in an environment that I can look at and be positive and hopefully implement it. If I make one person a, um, I make one person a better person by the fact is that they came into our event in November and that they learned something. They met me, they met you. They had the opportunity to hear from Martha McSally. You know, they had the opportunity to sit and listen to the women's panel, which, you know, Ellen Rohr is going to be moderating. Anna's going to be on, you know, Alicia Green, just really yeah. good people in the space. And, you know, to, to be a part of helping people is, Man, it's it's. Listen, everybody wants to to have the right things in their lifestyle from a a financial standpoint and be able to do the things with their kids and go there and this. But if you're if you're able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, "Man, I did the right thing by people and helping their business grow," and you do that every day at, at Rhino, and you know it's a situation that you know you're helping contractors grow their business. You've been doing it since since two thousand eight. You know it's it's a really powerful thing when you can say, "Man, I helped that guy's business go from a million to 3 million, to 5 million, to 14 million, to yeah. 38 million. Um, you know, and, and I think that that's one of the things that freedom will be able to do is it doesn't matter whether your guy doing a million two or you're doing 75 million, you're going to be able to gain something out of that event, uh, depending, you know, where you are and the, the, the people that are how to exit a business. I mean, when, you know, when you got guys like Dustin Van Orem and, you know, Chad Peterman and Aaron Gaynor and Keith Mercurio. And like, you're talking the who's who lineup, yeah. um, you know, across the board, David Carroll, uh, Dan Antonelli, you, you just, you just look at the lineup from top to bottom, Sean Michael Crane, um, Al Levy. Uh, it, it's just star studded. And it's sometimes it's, it's a little bit uh, fanboyish <laughs> to be in this environment of these like, these people that have been so good at what they're doing for such a long period of time. It's uh, it's truly, it's truly pretty much an honor. I feel to, to, to do it every day. And you know, what's cool about this is every single one of those guys that you, that you mentioned, I know all except for one. I've never, I've not met Sean Michael Crane um, heard, but not met is everyone is still very much a student, like still trying to put ourselves in circles and in situations where we're learning. I'm, I'm no different. And this is a part of, again, what makes this event so cool is Tommy does not need the money. Like he made a monster exit from a one, but he's trying to continue to give back. But even Tommy who has nothing to else to gain financially from this thing is still a student. Like he and I were together last night at the, at the Drake concert that he and Bree invited me and Anna to. And uh, as you know, Tommy can't not sit and talk about uh, business. Uh, that's kind of how, how we roll. But we were just talking about how um, we are trying to learn more about just video, like we're going to vid, this vid summit video, vid summit thing, just to learn about more like 
video and like just all the whole video world and getting ideas and things like that, constantly trying to learn. And, um, but he's always been, he's still remains a student constantly trying to learn just like I had Goodrich on a few days ago. And Goodrich is like always talking about how he's just always trying to learn and be a student and learn the things. So, you know, we put on events, you know, we have our own private event called Rhino X. And if everybody's there, anyone's ever come to that, it's a little bit different. It's a smaller event, but it's very intentional. Right. And the intent is to one pair these people together with some of these monster like players and make it comfortable for them to approach them because they're approachable. So, but it's just another event. It's just a private event that I happen to put on. Well, this is, this is one that, um, that if you, you know, it, like garage door freedom was kind of the first, uh, the vertical track was like the first go that Tommy put at it for the garage door industry. And it was very successful. So now he got a little idea of what he can do with it and then blew it up into this home service freedom thing that you now have to carry on your uh, back to get all the, all the, uh, blocking and tackling done. But well, listen, there's, there is a team that's around us, but they're also doing all these other different things as far as with regards to, <clears throat> as you've been to a, a vertical track and the, the work that Bree does and, and, oh, and yeah. Britt and quite frankly, as I like to call him, Tommy's external hard drive and Jim Leslie. Um, you know, one of the things that's interesting, as you said, is about all of those different people that are always still, still, still learning. The one crazy thing about Tommy is that like, as you probably were sitting there last night and his mind's going a million miles an hour and your mind's going a million miles an hour literally you're trying to think three steps ahead and he's thinking three steps ahead. And then you're coming back and you're converging nine steps back together to the original point that kind of started the, the discussion, but he remembers all nine points that went in that journey, even though that you're looking at him going, he isn't remembering a thing I'm saying. Um, and he's listening so intently to the discussion it's um you know there are certain people that are wired that way um and i'm unfortunately not one of those people um i'm really wired in a little bit of a different manner but i love the fact is that i get to be spawned by that energy um to be able to create an, an environment for the people coming to the event um and like i said you know the the team really is is putting a lot of effort into saying that and i've heard tommy say it multiple times chris is that if you're not happy with the return that you get by coming to this event, he'll give you your money back. Love it. He's not worried about it. He's not worried about what he's, what he's, what he's hoping is that you are able to take actionable items from what you learn from the marketing panel that you're going to moderate at the event. Okay. Everybody's talking about the lack of leads, the lack of this, the lack of that, but there's going to be five people sitting on that stage that are going to give you expertise that you're not going to get anywhere else, you know, and being able to say, Hey, how do, how do I take something back? How do I make one actionable goal that I'm going to make in the thir first 30 days? I mean, what's the biggest thing that you say, Chris, all the time about when you are speaking at events, what people fail to implement? 95, five. Yeah. 95, five. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, th this is what like, uh, you're spot on. What I want to do is, is make sure the listeners know like what makes this different than any other event. Well, we, you, you've kind of given the heart behind the event, which is essentially us talking about Tommy and kind of what he's put out there. I mean, the fact that he's willing to give you their money back, if you don't, if like you didn't get any value from it, just proves the point, right? Like it's not about the financial firm. It's about giving back. So, so maybe what we do is let's segue into letting the listeners know, like high level first off, and then we'll dig in a little bit more, but what is home service, like home service freedom? And what's the main goal with it all? Like, what is the main, like, what's the best outcome for a contractor? Uh, or the, what's the, what's the purpose behind all this that makes it be like, w what is that? I think a lot of it has to do with what you want to make it, but I, I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a business coaching and implementation group that um, will allow you to scale, you know, Tommy says all the time, nail and scale it and be able to put yourself in a position to exit a guy that's doing you know, a pest control company or a roofing and siding company that is doing a, you know, two, two and a half million. He might not be in a situation that, he has the ability to grow and scale as fast as somebody else does. And, but if you put 15 roofing and 
siding companies together that are all on the same platform, there's a possibility that you could exit very, very heavily in a very, very much a quicker amount of time by being in the right marketing, being in the right recruiting, having the right leadership, having the right culture, having the right system and processes that somebody's all, like I always say that the greatest thing that others have done for you is that they paved the path. You just have to make the wheel run in your direction. You don't have to reinvent it. Somebody else has already done it. And what he's going to do is give you the blueprint that will allow you to be in a situation to scale as effectively as you want. You know, there's probably any, on any given day, Chris, I get 10 to 15 different texts from him that come out of the, the home service expert email inbox that say, hey, Tommy, what CRM should I be on? Hey, Tommy, what marketing company should I be on? And, you know, the crazy part about Tommy is that he never once says, oh, I hope your inbox is blowing up right now. Like you see on certain, uh, you know, certain groups that are out there. He says, no, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a recommendation to my friend, Chris. I'm going to introduce you to Chris. He's going to help your business understand what it needs to grow, what you should be doing. He doesn't defame what is going on to help people grow. And that's the same message that he wants to carry on in what he's trying to do by creating a group that he can say, you need help with your equity incentive program. We're going to provide you that blueprint. Hey, you need a score for scorecard for performance pay. We're going to help you with that. You know, one of the greatest things that, that, that private equity has been able to do is leverage profits by, for companies by going directly into private equity. And now they're in a situation where they're not getting a rebate directly. It's been leveraged from the private equity. Well, he wants to provide you that opportunity that if you're going out to a local warehouse and that you're not able to get your dike in or, you know, or whatever it might be, we're going to give you an aspect that you can increase your net worth into your business as far as the profitability in your company by providing a great strategic partner program for you. So uh, there's so many, there's so many things that, that will come out of the freedom event. But most importantly, it's about providing, and there's a lot of great events and I'm not taking, you know, everyone has a little bit different, right. you know, uh, kind of theme, feel, look, you know, uh, Rhino X is very limited. It's very much a, a great opportunity for a lot of people to, you know, in my past life, I tried to get in, but I couldn't get in. <laughs> I might be able to now, um, you know, as far as leveraging, but it's an event that's set up that it really is like a destination yeah. wedding. Okay. And that's, I think what people are looking for are different messages. I mean, the registrations have been very much different. I think this is a, a different event. Tommy's vertical tracks that he's run very successfully have all been Phoenix based. Yeah. We wanted to pull something to the East coast that said, Hey, you know, if you're not able to tra travel to the Phoenix market or, you know, at wherever the, the next event is out West, there's a great venue with great speakers right at Disneyland, November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, that will provide you that opportunity to hear some really, really great speakers who want to give you their knowledge of where, when their business was doing a million and a half or their business was doing 800,000, what would they have gone back? I mean, like how many times, Chris, are people coming to you and say, listen, I know where you are with Rhino right now, but when you were 2009 and you and Anna were like in a situation where she's running PPC campaigns and you're out there selling and you know, you're getting the business off the ground and you smile because you know where that person is that's starting their digital marketing agency today. And you know, you're able to give back that value to, to people. And I, I think that's all that the people that are coming to the event want to be able to do. We very much said that it, we don't want it to be a vendor palooza. Um, we want it to be where there are strategic partners that want to help people's businesses grow that come to the event. And then most importantly, the people that we want to put on stage are not paying for it, but they're putting themselves in a position that they're giving back to the audience in what they're doing. Yeah. And so I, I mean, another thing is these events are what you make them regardless which one you go to, but the networking portion of this is so important, um, you know, to come and even if you're, an, even if you're an introvert, if you're going to put yourself out there and go to these things and spend time away, you might as well try to make the most of it by not only learning the things, but then meeting the people and every single one of those people that you named and, and uh, I'll also throw Tom Howard in there. 
all these guys, all, all these people will help you. I mean, all of them will step aside and help you if you ask for it. Like, that's what's great about this. And and, and really, even the big players that people are intimidated to talk to want to be helpful. Like, they're at that phase where they just really want to be helpful. So you, you mentioned a few things I think it's important to, to talk about is maybe unlike uh, – you know, like a, a, an ACA conference where it's mainly HVAC or if it's just HVAC and plumbing conferences, this is not just HVAC and plumbing. Like well, who is, who is the ideal like, candidate that would want to be a part of these things? Is it a specific industry? Does industry matter? Is it home services, is it home improvements? Like what's kind of the avatar for the, for the person like who would be the best fit to, to be a part of it? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, when Jim Leslie and I sat down and, 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 February, March of this year and said, you know, Tommy kind of tasked us with what he was thinking from his perspective is we kind of said to ourselves, first and foremost, why would somebody want to become a part of a a really great organization that's going to help their business elevate, that's going to help their business grow, that's going to help them put themselves in a position to elevate and get the freedom that's, that's, that's helping where they're headed, you know, from a business standpoint. We kind of came up with a couple of key core concepts. Number one is you wanted to have coaching, somebody else to hold you accountable, as well as to put you in a position to give you some ideas and thought processes that, you know, where you are. I mean, very, very differently is, you know, a guy like Aaron Gaynor is at at where he's at and getting ready to go above the hundred million mark. He's going to gain from a, from a Dave Geiger. Yeah. Okay. Because Dave is already facilitating the problems that happened at 100 million. Well, you know, Aaron's already done it. So to have that opportunity to be able to hear all these different speakers and, and panelists as far as what they're doing and what they've accomplished, I think the coaching part is is very much a part of it. Um, I think the community. Um, how else do you how else do you get the opportunity to go to an event and being part of that VIP group? Every speaker that's on it is going to be at the at, at the VIP aspect and hearing where it's going. And you, little old Joe in the truck, you know, doing six hundred thousand that ponied up the cash to go to the VIP event, um, you get the opportunity to meet them, ask those questions, take advantage of them. So, network, community, coaching, and strategic partner program are really what what we were looking for as far as the concepts, roofing siding, solar, pest, pools, uh, heating, air conditioning. You know, there are a lot of organizations out there that limit, number one, the number of people per DMA, okay? And then number two is limit the number of people that are in their their particular program. Here you have the best of the best that are going to, like, I don't know if there's a more successful home service exit than what Tommy had. Yeah. I, I don't know if there is. Um there might be, but I'm not familiar with it. Um, like to be able to understand and to pick this guy's brain in a one-on-one setting because he doesn't shut off. And if you want to ask him what CRM that you should be using or what performance pay, he's going right into it, telling you what you need to do, how you should do it, where you should go. And it just doesn't stop. It's like, it's infectious to be around. And so there, there's not one, if you're a painting contractor, great. We want you there. If there's a pool contractor, we want you. It's landscape. not limited to all. Yeah. landscape. Be there. Whatever. Garage, even garage door with vertical track and garage door freedom. What he has going on, there's still garage door companies that are coming just because of the network and hearing those different speakers about how they've gone about their business and growth. Love it. Well, let's let's do this. Um, one, I love that you said um, accountability too, because regardless of the event that you go to, what typically lacks is accountability after the event is done and the accountability in the way of, are you actually implementing anything that you took away? Uh, not just, not just tools or things that you've learned or skills that you've learned, but even the relationships that you've made, um, you got to use them. Otherwise you fall into the same bucket. That that's what my, what Bill was referencing earlier. My 95 five rule is from all of my time of going and doing these things is, is, 95% still walk away and don't do any of the thing. Don't do anything with uh, the stuff that they learned or like the people that they met and things like that. And uh, the 5% that do it typically the ones that become most successful. 
That's true. Just don't put yourself in the 95 bucket. Put yourself in the 5% bucket because that's what the whole purpose of this event is, is to put you into that bucket with those people um, with you know the, who, who will actually spend time with you and not just go and speak on stage and bail. You know, um, and so they will want to be there with you to, to walk you through these things. So even if you ask the same question five times, <laughs> because not all of well, us pick know, it up it, quick like Tommy does. It's, it's very interesting is that, um, and you and I've had some discussions about this and there's others that I've had the same discussion with the trades have been historically one of the best organizations in the, and I say organizations, meaning as a genre right. and opening the doors to their business to come and say, Hey, you want to go and see what Wyatt, Dustin, Mike Wilson, and Jeremy are doing at any hour. Come on in. All right. You want to go and do a shop tour of what Tommy has, see the training center. Come on in. Okay. And Chris, you recently bridged the gap with respect to, you know, in in where our former where my former life is and now where where yours is, it always was thought, oh my God, I can't let another digital agency hear my secrets. You know, I can't let, because they're going to want to steal my clients. And you recently had a podcast where you had seven other <laughs> digital agencies saying, let's share our best practices. Let's take what, we, what we're seeing in the trades and let's translate it into what's going on. And I think that that's the one thing that as far as actionable items that I implore everybody to do besides becoming a member of the Freedom Group and Home Service Freedom is Go see other people's shops yep. and what they're doing. If you're a painting contractor doing a million two and you want to get to three million, don't hang out with the guy that's doing a million two because he's going to have the same problems that you're doing. <laughs> Go see the guy that's got three million because he's and no got solutions. the problems you want. <laughs> and no solutions, you know? man. Yeah, definitely. So, I'm listen. It, uh, even even I went and. You know, when I was getting into roofing, I went and spent a day with a roofing contractor just to kind of understand that, you know, what, what does it, what's it like when they're on job site? What does it look like with the, with the homeowner? What are the questions that are asked? Because I'm trying to understand all the things from not only a marketing perspective, but the actual job itself and how the psychology of the homeowner works, you know, with the roof. Like I have, I'm still constantly a student trying to figure things out. So data can give me some stuff, but like just going and, you know, go like it's, listen, it's incredibly inconvenient for someone who travels as much as I do to have to go and do those things, but it's necessary. Like I went and learned a lot in that one day and just that one visit, even though I didn't want to go because it was on the East coast and I'm a West coast guy. <laughs> I learned so much from that that I came back and was able to implement a few like critical things that helped advance, you know, my skill much faster than had I not, and had, you know, had I not went. So yeah, man, you hear all the most successful people talking about going to different shops and visiting. And by the way, it doesn't even have to be in the same industry. Like there are plenty of people who believe in going and looking at outside, you know, outside the industry and learning the things there and figuring out, Oh, cool. That's not, you know, because it's outside the norm. And they could say, well, I can take this piece and then implement it in my business and it could look like this. You know, Goodrich will talk about bringing in leadership from outside the industry because they got a different perspective on things. And once they kind of learn how it's been done and their perspective, is there something new that they can bring to the table? He really likes that. I'm a fan of those things. So yeah, go visit the shops, go visit the people, create the relationships and friendships. Then you'll always have some sort of an answer to your questions. Or no, not necessarily as well an, an answer, but you'll have a resource that will help you get to that next level Yep. Um, as far as where your business goes. So I, I, you know, look, I think that there's, those are the, the, the key competencies that anybody in the home service business can come. Any amount of revenue can come. Okay. I've seen guys that have filled out the registration. They're doing 35, 40, 50 million that are still coming. Um, I've seen guys that are doing 600,000 that are going to there. There's nobody off the table that can gain from this event and then being a part where we're going to take the group. You know, you know, you and I were just kind of talking our, in a roundabout way about our circles, right? Like we have our different circles and, and I will always love to be at the bottom of my, of my circle. I don't want to be at the, at the top of my circle. And, uh, but I, cause I'm constantly learning from these, you know, from these guys. And this is almost another way to put yourself in a circle. It's going to be a big circle, but you're going to put yourself in a circle 
of people who are all trying to advance their companies who are vulnerable enough to say, I know got it all figured out. So like, I'm going to be a part of these things and learn like even the 40, $50 million guys still have things to learn. And guess what? Tommy is, was significantly larger than that. So, and so are others that are there. So you, regardless of what level you're at, you, someone is there in your circle and you're not at the top of it. <laughs> so definitely so you, so 100%. Got, so you got some things that you can learn and take away from it. So we're already like at 45 minutes into this thing. I mean, this, fl- <laughs> so I was like, Oh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what, how I think it, what it was is him rapid firing, you know, Bill's rapid firing questions to me at the beginning. That was something new. I've not done. That was fun. Yeah. It, but you know, you you mentioned how I brought all the other like all the competitors together, and Bill used to work at, at one SEO for a long time, and had been in the agency life. And prior to that, you know, Bill worked at LPages.com, which is where he and I he and I met years ago, but always in this kind of digital marketing like internet marketing space. I brought them on because you you know I'm a, I believe in the rising tide raises all ship mentality. I'm an abundance mentality thinker, but but I was put in that position early where I was just an option, so I have always kind of had to deal with that. And I went through all the phases that the small guys went through too. The, you got to try and chop down your competitors and that's your sales tactic. Like I went through that stuff too until somebody told me, stop doing that stupid stuff. It doesn't make sense. We're about building the tallest building, not burning the others down. So I'm not perfect. I learned the things too. I'm just 15 years removed from it, right? And so a lot of these other businesses may not be that far removed, but as in regards to size, they're there. And you have, you have no excuse not to learn something from someone at this event, regardless of the size of your business, no excuse. So, so what is the, what is the uh, cost to participate in this event, event bill? And by the way, from our conversation, I felt like you were, or I think you were telling me that it's nearing like sold out already. Am I, was that, am I right or wrong? Or did you add, were you able to add more? I can't remember what you said, but it sounded like there's already been a massive chunk of participation uh, or participants yeah. already. Well, let, let's answer a couple of those questions. Um, number one is, if Tommy says, I want to have 750 people as a goal, what he's really telling you is he wants 1250 to, to 1500. Okay. Um, he doesn't think small scale. He thinks large scale as probably in your conversations <laughs> last night, the, the, the scale word was probably as much as the profanity that <laughs> was the most on any of, um, uh, any of your episodes. <laughs> However, we've tried to make this event as far as, first of all, location, JW Marriott, Bonnet Creek, beautiful hotel, yep. absolutely gorgeous. No other conferences going on at the hotel. Um, so we have the whole hotel. Okay. It's eight minutes from Disney Springs. Okay. The event itself, the elite VIP has been sold out. Okay. Let me, let me stop for myself for a second because I always I almost forgot one of the most important parts. Tommy wants to impact your business directly. Okay. And so he's gotten a bunch of his business colleague friends together. Okay. To help in that growth and where it is um, and what people are going to be doing. Al Levy giving away his owner manual course and putting it together for somebody. Dan Antonelli giving a, a complete branding package together. Uh, Lance and his Titan Technologies is giving a year free of service titan consulting which you and i both know we probably hear more about that need as well as cybersecurity from shock it that's out there joe crisera one day a uh, one day um coaching on site tommy's gonna fly out to somebody's business it's over one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that he's giving away randomly to being a participant that's that's cool. huge. That's like cool. when you, when, when you think about saying, Hey, I want to give value to people at a show. Um, giving value is, is really the thing that we talked about implementation. We talked about all these different things. Um, but he didn't try to break the bank, you know, obviously. And as you well know, more than anybody, and I'm sure you probably hear from Anna, every time you say, let's do this at Rhino X, there it's not a money maker. No. It has nothing to do. There is not a there's not an event that's out there that is looking at the event as a money maker. You're looking to either break even or lose a little bit of cash. 
So we've made the event very, very, very affordable. As a matter of fact, all your listeners, you know that they can get it with a Rhino 20 discount yep. as far as a coupon code in the registration at freedomevent.com. Um, I'm sure that'll probably be somewhere in some follow-up notes out there that they can get a discount. What does the event cost? The general admission right now is running $14.95. Okay. With the 20% discount, it gets you at $11.95. Okay. To go to the VIP event, which if I'm sitting, if I'm sitting in somebody's shoes as a business and for $3,100, I can sit and have a conversation with Cristiano about my digital marketing or to talk to Dave Carroll about, you know, how to go about direct mail or to have a conversation with Dan Antonelli or specifically to talk to Tom Howard, Aaron Gaynor, right. uh, Keith, Keith Mercurio, yeah. uh, Martha McSally, Sean Michael Crane, DDP. Uh, I, I just, DDP. I, when I look at this, when I look at, uh, when I look at this, when I look at this lineup, it's like for me to have access to those individuals, uh, to be able to sit down with Ellen Rohr, uh, to sit down with Catherine Pollock, somebody who just went through this whole fetch a tech growth period, um, to sit down with Ish, uh, might drive you a little crazy because he's <laughs> moving really fast. Um, but you know, to be amongst these people at $3,100 and get the rest of it. It's it, it to me is a, a no brainer yeah, for sure. Um, as far as a business goes for sure. As long as you go back and do what implement it, right? you, you got to implement it. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree, but you know, in, in really, once you get there, you'll feel the energy and like the whole vibe of the meeting. And it's like, even, I don't want to spoil anything. Cause I know it's like some of the, you know, the beginning part of it, it's going to be, fun. So not only is it going to be, you get to learn a lot of stuff and meet a lot of people, it's going to be a, f a really fun event to be a part of. And you're right. Like some of these things are get crazy on costs. Like to me, that is incredibly reasonable. And the only way it doesn't, only way it doesn't make money for you is if you don't go, if you just go back and don't do anything. And by the way, Tommy said he would give you a refund too. If you felt like you walked away and, and it wasn't valuable to you. It's like, so my guess is the odds will be really slim that that happens. But point is, is like, you got no excuse to, to not go unless you have like a wedding or something on that weekend. So let, let me throw this at you. Okay. Picture this. You go to the event, you take the opportunity to spend the money to go to the event. You get the opportunity to meet all these great people. And you 10x your business in one year by implementing the strategies that are there. It's not then an issue of what the cost is. It's the value of what you have the opportunity to invest in yourself, your people, and your business. And to me, that's like, there's nothing better that a business owner can do. Think about you at Rhino. You invest in your people. You do... Um, and I always think that Tall Paul doing hip hop is probably one of the top 10 things I've ever seen. Okay. Um, but you invest in your people for somebody to invest in themselves and their business, to elevate it, to be able to get the best practices. Uh, you know, I can't say enough that you're going to change. It's going to be life changing event for, for, for a lot of people that, that choose to implement that 5% and be 1% better in their business than they were the day before. I love it, man. This is why I'm so excited about this event. And it's, you know, and selfishly, it's a lot of my buddies too. So this kind of works out. But the reason they're my buddies is because they're in my circle. And the reason they're in my circle is because they're very successful. And we and we all have this heart to to give back. So that's what you're walking into. You know, and, and Bill saying the opportunity to next to your business isn't some like random state. Like that's a legit opportunity that you can do. You come to this thing. You can, you can do that as long as you make the, you know, you, you, you take the notes, you go back, you implement the things, you meet the people, you stay connected, you do all these things, you'll be fine. So I, I, Bill, I, I think the I think the caveat to that, Chris, is that there, there are a lot of organizations that people work with out there. Um, and I think this is an opportunity that you're going to see a refresh out there like never before. Or a long overdue refresh. And I think that, do. um, I think that the guy leading, you know, it's funny as somebody said to me, what's, you know, what's the value difference in this event? And I said, we got the rock star leading the band. Like we have the guy that has done it 
more successful than anybody else in Tommy. Like, why wouldn't you want to be a part of that type of growth? Yeah, and he's that's not just I, there for, I, and he's not just there to do one, you know, forty-five minute speaking, you know, engagement, and then he, you know, so he's there. It's like it's his his event. So that that to me is like some of the most valuable stuff is that you get to actually sit and be with the speakers. Like that's what I love the most is when people when the speakers will stay and hang out and and actually spend time with the people instead of just talking at them from stage. Now they get to talk with them, you know, afterwards. So. That is the most valuable thing. So, Bill, I appreciate you making time. I'm, dude, this is always fun because you and I can sit and chit-chat about stuff for hours, but you know how I feel about this event. You know, when we first, when we first talked about it, I'm equally as excited to be, a, to be a part of what it is, the purpose of it, because it very much is aligned with, with, with my beliefs and my purpose. I appreciate you giving me your time. I know you're on uh, East Coast time, so you're three hours ahead of us over here in the podcast podcast I'm on, I'm on on my way to cheer practice after we're done here and you're probably on your way to football so um you, um, you joined yeah. the cheerleading that's very cute maybe you can show us your your moves at home no my, my I'm, i'll be i'll be doing my best uh, wrestler imitations at the event oh. um for where it's going but uh listen i really appreciate the opportunity to be it's for me this uh i think this is a bridging of of, of a, one career into another um, and I, I feel very honored and uh, gr- grateful that you've given me um, your opportunity to, to be able to, to have some conversations about uh, what we have going on here. And I appreciate uh, our, our relationship. It's almost 20 years. And uh, wow. who, who, who would have thunk when Jim Lambert was leading that office, <laughs> we'd both be where we were today. So uh, Lambo. Uh, um, I'm still trying to I'm think I'm trying to get Easty to come to the event. So that would be super cool. That would be super cool. 20 years. Thanks a lot, man. It's all right. (laughs) For feeling it. (laughs) Well, listen, listen, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. I appreciate you hopping on here too. And so it's freedom event. Freedom event.com is the actual domain, right? The website. Freedom event.com will get you into tell, understand who all the speakers are, where it's going. Um, the it's Rhino 20 is Rhino 20 R Y N O two zero we'll get you the coupon code for, um, for your listeners, Chris. Sweet. JW Marriott, Orlando, 11, November 1st through 3rd, right? Yeah. November 1st through 3rd. So go to freedomevent.com, check it all out. And of course you can probably always reach out to Bill too. He's pretty accessible on social. And if you don't, if you want to, what's, you want to share your email real quick? Cause everybody has it. Yeah. It's, it's simple. Bill at home service freedom.com. Perfect. There you go. Flood his inbox. So take advantage of it. This is the first time I've done a feature episode. And I thought, what better thing to feature than this? I was excited about it with when I was talking with Tommy about it last night. I know he was excited about it, and and I know you were excited about it. But you know, it it might have seemed this you know to someone like, well, what, what's the big deal? It's just just this is just another event. It's not just another event. It is not just another event. And hopefully, you kind of learned the heart behind this thing too. But it's your new circle if you want it to be your circle. And you want to put yourself in the right circle that helps you with the accountability piece. Like he talked about networking, community, coaching, you know, all the things that you need to scale the business, regardless of size you have, and you've got the leader of the band who's going to be there. Who's putting, not just putting it on, not just speaking, but also there to spend time with you. So take advantage of it. And again, it's R Y N O two O save yourself 20% off of this thing too. We'll put it in the, in the notes as well. But I look forward to seeing you there, Bill. It's actually not going to be that far off. I mean, you blink, this thing is going to be here. So, like, get signed up, get your tickets squared away, get your flights booked, get your room squared away. By the way, that JW is beautiful. I've been there before. Awesome. Um, and change, make a change, man. Listen, I don't know if you've if you've thought this year was a piece of cake or what, but um, it's been tough for a lot of uh, contracting companies. And so you're always trying, you got got to try and find new things. Like I, I said this in the, a couple episodes ago, what got you here it might not get you there. You have to try new things, learn new things, and you might have to think outside the box a little bit. Uh, but sometimes it's just having the right person in your network to lean on to help get you through the problems and the, the simple things that you didn't think about or the things you don't know to ask, right? Like, so having those people really matters. So whatever it is, you don't got to do everything, but you got to do something. Ain't that right, Bill? No doubt about it. 100%. And uh, this is the event that's going to help you. And uh Look forward to, to seeing you uh, probably in coming weeks, the different things that we got going on together. 
Um, and uh, I hope that your listeners take the opportunity to, to help their business grow and get the freedom that they're looking for. Get the freedom that you're looking for. So sign up now or forever. Hold your peace. <laughs> Until, until then. And by the way, come say hi to me too, because I'll be there too. I am leading the marketing panel, so I am excited for that. I love moderating the marketing panels because I get to control all the questions. It's my favorite part. But you know, I'm going to ask all the right questions that you want to know. Whether they're, I'm not going to just lob up softballs and easy questions. I got to come up with the good stuff too. So, uh, but anyhow, you already said you already know because I say it every single podcast. You don't have to do everything, but you got to do something. And the home service freedom. Freedom event is the one is one of those things that you need to do. No zero days. There we go.